Hi everyone. Right, this uh, video um, decided to do uh, a little something else. I saw uh, uh, Mr. Angus's um, um, uh, caveman power supply, as I'm going to call it. Um, I think he called it the poor man's power supply. Um, I thought I'd just uh, share something that uh, I'm aware of. Uh, perhaps other people can use it, etc., etc. What I have in front of you is an LM317T. It is a variable voltage regulator, capable of handling up to one and a half amps. Maximum input voltage, uh, if memory serves, is 37 volts. Uh, dropout is uh, one and a half volts, something like that. Um, minimum voltage is 1.2 volts. So how do you use them? Well this one is in a TO220 package which means it's directly compatible with plug boards and the standard spacing on strip boards. What else do you need? Strangely enough, I think you all know what that is. It's a 1K pot commonly used on pulse motors. You don't have to use that type, they are quite expensive. You can use ones like that and ones like that. Again, both of those, well, all three of them actually, are compatible with plug boards. Uh, so you can quite easily make them up, or, of course, you can solder them. Anyway. One thing to mention with the 317s are that they are quite inefficient. Um, basically, uh, if you have, say, a 24 volt input and you want to kick out 12 volts, uh, for every amp that you kick out on 12 volts, i.e. every watt, you will also dump that same amount as heat. Right? Now, obviously, if your output voltage is 12 volts and your input is, say, 18 volts, then you'll kick out half. Um, so for every watt that you pull as power, you'll kick out half a watt as heat. So, make sure you've got uh, reasonable heat sinking. That's a small one. Um, for a couple of hundred milliamps. Um, I did have a huge heat sink around here somewhere. They don't seem to be able to find an angle. Can you give me a second? I did have a big one. Honest. Darn it, where did I just put that? No, don't you just hate that when you, when you grab something to shit out of it? This one, yeah, you can't see it. Get the camera up. This is a six output version that I made myself. It's got a huge socket seven heatsink on it, and all the wiring's underneath. For it, nice thick cable. Uh, quite happily kick out one and a half amps per channel. And I've got six channels on that, so all six are independent. So, how do you go about wiring one of these things up? Well, for the time being, we're going to assume you don't have a heatsink on. Okay, quite simple. Let's go and draw one. Uh, yeah. I'll have to draw it upside down for you guys. Exploited version of the chip. Yes, this is nice and simple for you guys. So, pin one, pin two, pin three. Okay, that's upside down for you guys. Sorry. Anyway. Pin 1 is the adjust line, pin 2 is the output, 
pin 3 is the input. So, let's draw a battery here. Uh, hey, you can actually see that. So, plus on that side. So, where do we go? Plus to there. Quite simple. The negative doesn't get connected to the chip. However, you have a pot. Right, so let's go and draw a pot. And you have a simple little representation of a pot. Right, one side of the pot goes to source negative, which is a common negative. Right. The wiper goes to pin 1, here, and this one, the other side, goes to the output. Right. And then your actual power supply output, which I've just drawn off the screen, off the camera rather, there we go, we'll call this one positive, for this, oops, and there's pin 2, and this one Yeah, 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 I know. It's not very neat. Goes to the negative. It's that simple. Components, all you need, well, minimum is two. Um, if you're not using it to charge a battery, um, then you'll need a capacitor on the output. If you're using it as direct supply. Word of caution. Uh, the, these chips do not like EMF, so if you are running a coil, uh, powering a coil directly from one of these, uh, then you're most likely going to pop them, and they do va vaporise quite spectacularly, if you're not careful. Right? Also, if you are charging a... Um, 12 volt battery, right? Um, from a, uh, a coil with 12 volt output, all you do is rectify the output from the mains coil uh, for diodes, rectifier, whichever you want to use, into the chip as if it was the battery there. I've drawn the battery just because it was easier to do. Uh, the only thing is, uh, when the battery is low, the, this regulator will try to push to to allow through as much current as possible, which will prob probably send it over temperature. So it'll be most likely over one half amps. So there's two things you can do there. Um, if the battery will handle the current, use multiple chips to and link them all up together you link them in parallel pin one to pin one pin two to two pin three to three you don't need multiple pots and to, pit, to uh, excuse my language mess around with tuning each individual chip you can hook them all up to the same pot um, the other thing that you can do is to limit the output current from the transformer um, you can use a resistor but that's, again, barbaric, to say the least. Um, alternatively, you can use a PWM from an NE555, but that's getting complicated. Uh, they do have limited thermal um, cutoffs on them, um, which is 120 degrees centigrade, I think. Hot enough to burn you. 
um, so be careful make sure you've got plenty of heat sinking even if it's complete and utter overkill doesn't matter the colder you keep them the longer they're going to last especially if you abuse them however whatever you do do not use them to try and charge a lithium based battery the lithium battery will explode because they require a charging method that the 317s will not provide at all now the one that I'll show you the 317T is the 220 package there are others available for those that want to do uh, um, PCBs and whatnot. so just to show you that let's stick the components in on the circuit there you go. Any questions, give me a holler. Um, hopefully that will make things simpler for people. Um, it will allow you to set a voltage to keep, maintain the battery at. Now this is important. What will happen is, when if the battery is extremely low, uh, more than point... Let me work it out here more than about half a volt below what you've set the regulator to right, it'll open up and whoosh it'll constantly push it when it gets to about 0 0.3 volts this thing will start to back off on the current right, because it is an active regulator now if you set a 12 volt battery to say this to 12.8 volts to charge a 12 volt battery it'll get to around about 0.6 of a volt quite quickly right? and then after that it'll trickle charge the battery up to 12.8 right? which is probably what some of you guys want to do now if you're running a pulse motor and you need a stable voltage right, this is the key here use a battery on the primary side hook one of these up uh, to the battery uh, and set the voltage bear in mind um, that you're going to have fun setting the voltage now you'll need a bit of trial and error basically um, now when you're running it there'll be a sudden the, when the coil is energised there's a surge from the battery and that's what it's there for right. um, so even a standard car battery will work right. the car battery will provide that sudden surge of current these regulators do have a slight latency with them right. so what will happen is once you while you're running it right, the voltage in the battery will appear to drop from what you've set it to Right. Um, it's not entirely true multimeters will pick up on the average voltage and it will be lower when it's being pulsed but what will happen is the further that drops down from your desired voltage the more the regulator will open as a continuous current so your pulse motor will be um, pulling current from the battery in a pulse and this will be driving it continuous this will be supplying continuous current so one thing to be aware of there is you are charging and discharging a battery at the same time however provided you've set it to way above 12.6 right, uh, what you'll be pulling should be the fluff charge off the top of the battery so you shouldn't screw up the um, the chemistry inside the battery. So there's a tip for you. Hopefully someone's found it interesting. Um, I'll now, now go and post this uh, on YouTube and um, I'll see if I can persuade Angus to go and build one. Anyway, have fun. As I said, hopefully that will be helpful to uh, several people. Talk to you later.